So I got a new notebook. It's green, so that's pretty cool, I guess. And well, it's graph ruled, so I really couldn't go wrong. And last but not least, it holds my day-to-day -day schedule. Friday wrapped up two long weeks of a lot of science. And like, when I mean a lot of science, I mean a lot of science. Like, science was going on left and right. And all the little kids in the schoolyard were jealous. It was a little weird. They were... yeah. Last week, I spent preparing my plasmids. I already had them constructed, but I needed to prep a lot more for my transformation. And this week, I was doing the last minute preparations for the transformation itself. And then on Thursday, I went to the University of Rhode Island to do the transformation. And then yesterday, on Friday, I did the post-apocalypse or post-transformation activities. All in all, it was a crazy but fun two weeks of science. But now I have about a two week vacation from lab as my diatoms recover and grow from the transformation. Well, it won't really be like a vacation of anything because, well, I'm working at the bookstore now. Those damn first years want their books and sweatshirts. Okay, so let's talk diatom transformations. If you saw my previous video, you will know that I've been creating these plasmids over the past couple semesters to do some fancy inducible expression sorts of things. All you need to know is that I created these plasmids and the goal was to transform them into diatoms. But unlike bacteria, diatoms have kind of harder shells. So you can't just be like, DNA, go into diatom. You have to be like, DNA, diatom. <laughs> And that requires heavy machinery. Heavy machinery we don't have in my lab. So this means we needed to pay a visit to our colleagues in Rhode Island. And that meant waking up early. Science starts at 7.30 in the morning on transformation day. First, I needed to do cell counts on my diatom cultures so I knew how dense they were. If we know how many cells there are in a given volume, we know how much liquid culture to use for the transformation. And then I need to put together all of our lab equipment for the transformation and load it up into the car. And once we got to the university, we needed to pellet our cells. Once we pelleted the cells, we would resuspend them in a tiny bit of volume and spread them on the transformation plates. These damn diatom plates took forever to dry. But then it was on to science! Here is the lab bench where we did the transformations. These brown little circles are called rupture disks. They're manufactured to rupture at a certain pressure. So the particle bombardment system slowly builds up pressure up until the rupture disk, well, ruptures. And then the DNA shoots through and hits the diatoms, and it's awesome. Well, awesome for me, but not for the diatoms. These yellow disks are where the DNA will be loaded on. Diatom plates waiting by. And here we have the actual loading of the DNA onto the little disks. The wire circle you can see in his hand is called the stopping screen. It prevents the rupture disc from flying through, which is really important if you're trying to transform delicate little cells. At this point in the transformation process, it's a matter of screwing things together, making sure everything's put in place all properly. And then a diatom plate is loaded to be transformed. gets me every time. After a plate of diatoms are transformed, they are gently scraped and washed off and put back into a liquid culture. This is so they can recover and grow. And now for the hard part. We gotta get these damaged cells home, which means carefully packing them up into the car and driving very slowly, like the speed limit for once, and getting them back into our growth chamber. But what do you mean like damaged? Albert, the awesome professor who you saw in the some of the clips there, um, in Transform the Diatom Saurus, gave it this analogy. It's like taking a bowling ball and shooting it through your stomach. You probably won't be too happy. But yeah, we got the cells back safely to our lab, and as far as we can tell, they were happy. And then we let them grow overnight. The next morning, it was time to count cells again. This is because we wanted to plate the diatoms again, but this time with the antibiotic that we transformed them with, or rather the plasmid that confers resistance to said antibiotic. This way we can select four diatom colonies that have our plasmids. It's funny, you can see the cells on the footage recorded on my iPhone 4 
through the microscope better than I can see it with my glasses off and counting cells. Anyway, after I did what seemed like a bajillion cell counts, it was time to spin down some cultures so I could plate them. And we did that with this freaking huge centrifuge. It's actually pretty sweet. Beep pop beep beep. After what seemed like forever, um, I counted all my cells and I pleated all the cells I needed to and they're growing for the next two weeks or so. Here you can see my current collection of diatom plates and diatom liquid cultures. So over the next two weeks I'll be checking in hopefully daily to see how my cells are doing. And hopefully within two weeks I can um, start some liquid cultures from the plates and start doing all the magic that I need to.